I grew up in a household hearing racial slurs where my mom would correct my father and say, we don't, you know, that's, that's not a nice thing to say you know, about those people. I guess you can see it most um, when you watch the 4th of July parades. Um, Confederate flags will appear in the Boy Scout troops. When I was young, I really didn't know what that meant. But I sort of got that I was supposed to stay away from people of color, particularly black people. That they were going to take something from me and they were going to hurt me in some way. In college, I once went to a, an event and I approached a young um, African-American male who had spoken very beautifully at this gathering and, and I said, I want to help, how can I help? You know, how can I help promote change and equality for African-Americans and for all people of color? And he just turned to me and he said, educate your own people. Are you ready to go? Yeah! yeah. I didn't want to be the bad guy. I didn't want to be um, the person that causes pain, that causes hurt. I didn't want to be the guy that says stupid stuff that makes people um, mad at me. Um, so I tried to distance myself from that, tried to, to deny that I was white. I realized that my struggles around being white and not wanting to be white and trying to run away from it, that I couldn't run away from it. And so the question was, if I have to have this privilege, what am I going to do with it? What would happen to privilege if racial justice actually existed, and is that possible? And I don't know. I think we can all be bigots. I think being a bigot is an equal opportunity phenomenon. But in order to create a system or systemic institutionalized privilege, you have to have prejudice plus the power to institutionalize that prejudice to put it into laws, to put it into actions, policies, procedures. If white people don't stand up and don't learn to be allies to people of color, we definitely are going to have a very, very difficult time ever attaining anything even remotely resembling a just community. And we may not get there anyway. I mean, it's very possible that racism will never be, you know, sort of fully eradicated from this or any other society, but we are certain that it won't be if we don't do the work. I want to end racism because it destroyed my family, and I don't want it to destroy other people's families. Intimacy is this radical concept that when we can get there, either as allies across our lines that, that have been so inculcated from such an age, there is power to change the world with that. There's incredible power.